Alright, so hey there Proxy, and this is Proxify here, and guys, welcome back to another episode of the Pokemon Renegade Platinum Let's Play. So if you guys missed out in the last episode, basically what happened here is, is that we are finally now in Celestic Town, guys. We also went and headed on back over to Velso City, also went and speak, uh, yeah, we also went and spoken on over to Bertha, and also got ourselves the Moonstone to actually get ourselves a fully evolved, now, Nido Queen, which, uh, now we actually could be finally able to actually say that we do have all of our Pokemon fully evolved, which that is going to be really nice because we are going to be taking care of Cyrus in this episode for today. I'm a little bit nervous about this because I did actually go and check out his team and his team is at his max level around level 46 and we don't really have a lot of Pokemon that are not really perfectly around that type of level but I think we should be okay because I did go and check out what his team is so that, because he does have a Honchkrow, he does have a Crobat, he does also have a Weavile and also a Magnezone which I think we should uh, be somewhat okay uh, for what's going to be happening with both the Magnezone and also with the Weavile because as long as Luffy is still going to be alive, we should be somewhat uh, alright for what is going to be happening throughout this episode for today. But anyways, uh, let's just go and check out on our team, do a little bit of a uh, team recap, and let's go and do this thing. So first of all, we actually do have Luffy at level 42, holding out on the Quick Claw. It does have Scratch, Backy, Wave, Flamethrower, and also Close Combat. We also do have Milo at level 40 with Psychic, Reflect, Hypnosis, and also Fly. We also do have Queen now uh, uh, as our Nido Queen. Uh, it does have... Uh, uh, Crunch, Water Pulse, Toxic Spice, and also Poison Tail, and is also at level 44. Uh, we also do have Shadow at level 46 with Crunch, Ice Fang, Wild Charge, and also Thunder Fang. We also do have Poke at level 47 with Moon Blast, Nasty Plot, Fly, and also Draining Kiss. And we also do have Esper at level 42 with Morning Sun, Power Gem, Shadow Ball, and also Psychic. So that is basically everybody on the squad. And uh, without further ado, let's go and take care of our first uh, Galactic Grunt here. That is going to be in Celestic Town, which this guy hopefully should not be all that too challenging. But this town is insignificant. There is nothing of value here. It doesn't need to exist, so I'll go and blow it up with a Galactic Bomb. If you try to mess with me, I'll shut you down with a Pokemon battle. So what's it going to be? Are you going to mess with me? Of course. So you dare to oppose Team Galactic, so that means that you're taking on the world. No, the universe even. Alright, and here we go. So normally this guy is actually somewhat of a pretty easy challenge back in the original Pokemon Platinum, so I don't know if he's going to still have the same exact type of Pokemon from before. Uh, no, he doesn't. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be starting out with uh, How to Mouth here first, which that really shouldn't be too much of a problem because we do actually have close combat, so... There we go. So Hound Doom is down and out, and we can uh, hopefully get ourselves a, 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 another level up here relatively soon. So 939, that should be leading us up to level 30, uh, 43. So yes, that is going to be very, uh, really, relatively nice. All right, now we actually do have Golbat coming out, which this is going to be good for Shadow as well too. Kind of get our practice in before we actually go and take care of that freaking Crobat that uh, Cyrus is going to be having. But I think we should be fine anyways, because as long as we have Thunder Fang and we do actually have that magnet st uh, still stuck on Shadow, we should be somewhat okay for it. Alright, here we go. Uh, let's set up for Thunder Fang. That should be too bad. He's just going to be setting up for a Haze. So all stats were eliminated, so I don't really have any stats or any of the sort of like that there. Come on, let's get it knocked out. You can do this. Oh yeah, that's what we could do out here. Got ourselves a critical. Nice. But is that going to lead us up to another uh, another level up up here? No. Almost. Uh, now we actually do have a Beedrill, which I think that should be okay as well too, because I'm pretty certain I think Beedrill is also flying, so we should be able to just go and hopefully knock this out with a Thunder Fang. No, it's not. Okay, so it actually does neutral. But it still knocks it out anyways, so we'll still take that win. <laughs> There we go. Oh yes, and by the way, I do actually have the EXP share uh, actually set onto Milo now. I actually kind of removed it uh, off of uh, Nido Queen because we already got all the way up to level 44, and I think that's somewhat okay uh, for Nido Queen. Um, but I, I think probably around like Iron Islands or so, uh, I may probably re-put it back onto uh, onto Nido Queen because uh, because I do feel a little bit afraid about uh, about Riley's team, and I don't really know if uh, Riley's going to have any type of Pokemon that are going to be way too crazy, so I may probably want to go and add that back onto uh, onto Nido Queen there. Uh, this little charm is something made uh, in Celestial Town long, long ago. It was made in honor of a, uh, of a mythical deity said to have created in Sinnoh. These old charms are still discovered and now and again, and since you're in Celestial Town, why not have a look around inside the ruins? Well, we're going to do that, but we'll just kind of hold off on that just for a little bit right now. Just want to get myself all healed up, and then we can uh, go and save and just be ready to rock and roll. Well, actually, I'm not going to go and save right now, because I'm actually going to do that at the end of the episode. Because you never know, uh, because uh, 
because of, for I think like the past few days or so, uh, my mic has been kind of like getting like cut out uh, from like OBS like most of the time. I don't know if that's just something that, that the short mic uh, actually likes doing. Um, but so I'm just going to kind of hold off on saving until like the end of the episode until we actually go and see if this whole video is going to be working out just fine. I really do like all the little relic type of uh, uh, type of sketches that are here. So a giant etching of a Pokemon-like creature covers the wall. There's something faded text etched in as well. So the flow of time never stops in the past, future, and present. Interesting. Okay, so let's go and head on over here. And I think uh, all we have to do now is just kind of go and look at this uh, image here. And then we should be able to see where Cyrus is going to be. So Prox examined the ancient cave painting. Mysterious designs cover over a whole section of the wall. There are three strange things forming a triangle in the middle of them, a shining sphere. So what is this all about? So also as well too, uh, I don't know if I already said this, but hopefully you guys are having yourself a good uh, a good Wednesday out here because you guys should also be seeing uh, another uh, Mother 3 episode as well too. Uh, and then I believe for Thursday's content, you guys should also be seeing another Metroid Samus Returns uh, Let's Play also happening as well for that, uh, which we are going to be relatively almost finished with Area 4 and almost heading straight on over to Area 5. We're just literally taking care of the brand new enemy that we just already uh, went and faced in the Metroid Samus Returns, which I believe is known as the Gamma or Z. Zeta Metroid. Uh, it kind of looks like a Xenomorph type of uh, uh, type of alien, which it does look pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, and they are a little bit tough, and we are going to be seeing a lot more of those guys uh, later on in like Area Five or Area Six. Uh, so a new legend of a, uh, of a new world should take place. I am, uh, am I wrong? So if you feel that way, come and challenge me. Well, we're not going to do that just yet because I want to kind of just go and switch out my team right now. Whoa. Okay. So seems like he kind of wants to kind of look at the at the lake trio as well instead okay so let me just go switch out in the shadow and let's actually go and take this well am i wrong if you feel that way challenge me okay well, i know you trainer we met at mount cornet so why uh so why would you want to protect this inc uh, incomplete world as the boss of team galactic i will show you the error of your ways and here we go guys we got ourselves our first battle out here with cyrus now, uh, now, um, basically I did already tell you guys that he does have a max level of 46, uh, so Crobat is going to be starting off as well here, which we should be okay. Nice, we actually intimidate uh, and lowered his attack, so that we sh uh, should be good. He's going to be set up for a sludge bomb. Ouch. Okay, there we go. We kind of fast forward through that. Jeez. Okay, well, at least now we're at uh, level 47 there. Okay, now also Milo is also at level 41. Uh, I don't know if I should probably kind of sack off a Pokemon out here, but um, I guess what we could probably do is kind of just go and set up for maybe Poke, I guess. See how much uh, Moonblast is going to do. So let me just see how much this is going to actually do out here. Actually does a lot, and it knocks it out, so we'll do it. Okay. I was a little bit afraid because I thought I was still going to probably uh, still kind of use uh, Luxray out here, but I think we're all right. Uh, we also do have a main zone coming out, which I think that would be perfect out here for Luffy. Now I was uh, thinking about off recording was adding on the uh, on the choice band to actually see how much uh, uh, close combat is going to do, but we'll see uh, how much I'm going to do it right now without having the choice band on. Uh, we're going to start for a flamethrower. And that almost takes it out. Damn. Ooh, nice. And we're actually still faster. Okay, even when we're paralyzed, that, that works out very well. Okay, there we go. So Manazo is down. I think we got this in the bag, guys. I was actually a little bit afraid about this battle that was going to be happening for today, but uh, we're actually doing uh, pretty decent right now. All right, now here comes out Weavile, which just may probably be an issue. Uh, if we could probably set for a close combat or a flamethrower, we should be all right. Oh god. Okay, nice. Oh, thank god. Wow. That was going to be getting really scary if that Weevil was still going to be alive and still setting up with all those Swords dances. So good job, Luffy. Nice. Well, there we go. First battle down with Cyrus. So remarkable, but Elder, your attitude told me, uh, oh, I kind of skipped past through that. But if the, the beings of Titan Space are brought together, then they can't be stopped. Oh, and off he goes. So such a strange, strange man spouting out such nonsense, but the time and space of Sinnoh are filled with memories and thoughts uh, of our countless people and Pokemon. Uh, this is a wonderful world, and what we need here is to change it. So yes, I found something useful, so you should take this. It belongs to my granddaughter, but she doesn't use it anymore. 
So we got ourselves HMO3, which we can now finally go and add that onto Nidal Queen. Hopefully, because uh, I'm not too entirely certain if Nidal Queen can actually learn Surf. I know that Nidal King could actually learn Surf. So a Pokemon learn Surf, it can uh, carry you across the water and sea, but you've been a great help, so thanks uh, for us. Okay, and there we go. Because uh, finally, we don't really need to have a uh, freaking Water Pulse anymore, because Water Pulse wasn't really doing all that too good uh, later later on throughout all the other different gyms that we were facing. Uh, let me go and keep my head all the way down. There we go. Uh, let me see here. Okay, so actually, Queen can actually go and uh, learn uh, Surf, which that is uh, very nice. So, yep, let's just go forget about Water Pulse, and there we go. Got a much better and uh, crazier water type move. There we go. Okay, so now it's off to go to the to the Pokemon Center as fast as possible, but uh, hold on, I think I actually do have Petra Berries. Because as the berry collector, I always want to make sure to have all of the different berries with us. Nice. Even though that I don't really need to worry about kind of wasting off those type of berries, because again, uh, since we are... Uh, playing uh, generation four we don't really have to worry about getting uh, into the uh into the fainting of the of the poison type of pokemon so the bizarre ways that they dress and all their wild claims about making a new universe i thought it was just a uh, silly talk nothing uh, to take seriously but there's surprisingly more trouble than, than expected trying to monopolize pokemon just isn't acceptable so by the way have you heard of the place called pal park uh, it's a special uh, pokemon preserve that's located on route 221 by sage town go in there it might help you complete your pokedex too you should visit uh then if you are interested in the ruins then you should go to kandale city there's a library there that is stocked with ancient books and Sinnoh history which that is where exactly that we're going to be heading on over to i'm not going to be really worrying about heading on over to the pal park i will actually go and worry about heading on over to uh to the fugo ironworks but we'll actually save that for another time because uh kind of want to go and uh, do some battling over at KLA City first. Now, uh, I know that uh, in, in the past few episodes, I did say uh, that I will be uh, going and capturing out Rotom. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, for me right now, I just don't really have like the, the best of time to actually do a recording at, at night, but I will be doing a nighttime episode relatively soon because I'm pretty certain I think you actually have to do it around, I think, 8 o'clock to like around like 4 in the morning, if I'm not mistaken, because I think that's like kind of like the time frame to like where you can actually go and capture yourself a Rotom. Uh, so uh, I will be doing that uh, relatively soon guys uh, because i do actually have fly so i will be able to go back to eternal city much faster without then having to like worry about not having fly and kind of like backtracking for such a long time so i will be doing that rotom thing uh relatively soon and same with fugo ironworks so we may probably save that maybe roughly i want to say like maybe after byron probably uh we can probably go and do those two little side things uh, but for right now, let's just go ahead back over to Jubilee because I think that is where exactly that we need to actually go and be. And it has been a while since we have been here in Jubilee for quite some time. Alright, and here we go. Back to the happy area of Jubilee City. And I'm pretty certain that all my Pokemon are fully healed up, so we don't really need to worry about that all that too much. And uh, I guess while we are here, we should probably go and grab on some of the uh, different apps, I guess, but... Do we really need to worry about having the different apps? Uh, not really. I don't really think there is too much uh, of, of, of the apps that I really do kind of enjoy all that too much uh, when you actually do unlock them, so I'm not going to be really bothered about it. Now, I'm pretty sure I think... Uh, I don't know if you already get yourself the calculator already here in, uh, like during the time that you actually get yourself the poke edge, or I think you have to wait, I think... Uh, during the time of uh, when, when you actually go and talk to that guy uh, to actually get the other different app features. But uh, the calculator is something that I actually do like because that's how I uh, originally used to uh, collect all my Pokemon uh, back in the day is, is when I used to have my action replay card and uh, used to capture out all the legendary Pokemon and all of that uh, uh, back, in, uh, back in those times uh, to actually complete out the Pokedex that I wanted to do with my action replay code. Uh, w w yeah, with my action replay card uh, to get the code. And, uh, and then all of a sudden I got myself the, the National Pokedex and then I was able to go and do the whole little uh, post game thing with uh, Professor Oak which I thought that was really cool because I never really knew that that was actually something that you were able to do uh, during that time. Uh, which I do have to say I, I, I kind of really uh, did like that uh, little post game a little bit. Alright so here we are. So we're almost getting close to KLA because it's just right in this vicinity. Alright so a man of the sea is also a man of Pokemon. Well, I know that you're going to have some water type Pokemon, so this is going to work out perfectly out here for Shadow. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys actually have ever done the uh, the post game with Professor Oak uh, during in, uh, Pokemon Platinum. 
uh, to go and capture out those legendary birds because I remember doing those uh, back in uh, back in that time. All right, there we go. That should be able to hopefully knock out the Almostar. There we go. Nice, and with a critical hit as well, Almostar is down and out. I thought for certain that I thought that Thunder Fate wasn't going to probably work because because I thought he also had that part like uh, rock or ground type out there. Now we also do have a kit, and I'm a little bit nervous about this, but hopefully maybe Thunder Fate can work. I don't know if, you, if it is or not. Oh, it looks like it is. And that should... Oh, almost knocked it out. Got himself amnesia out here, which that is just gonna kind of throw his own move. So that's fine. Okay, there we go. Wow, Milo is getting up into those levels right now. And wants to learn Moonblast. No, that's crazy. I never knew that Milo would actually learn Moonblast before. Uh, now we actually do have Fly, Psychic, and also Reflect. I kind of like having the Reflect. I kind of like having the Hypnosis. Um, Psychic is actually really nice. I really do like having that move out there. Maybe... Maybe we don't really need a Reflect anymore. Hmm. Well, I don't know, because, like... Because, like, for me personally, like, I just want to keep probably Reflect, because, like, I know that we're going to be going, like, to, like, the Leaf Core and everything, so I would probably want to, uh... Kind of miss past on Moonblast. Yeah. So let's just give up on it. I'm sorry, Moonblast, but I just kind of want to keep Reflected Hypnosis. I want to keep any type of status type of effects move right now on anybody. Okay, now here we go. Now we got ourselves Kabutops. Uh, let me see. Maybe Thunder Fake could at least, at least do something out here. There we go. Nice. And that should probably knock out the Kabutops, which it does within one hit, which that is good. And all we have to do now is just make our way on over to where Cantilave is going to be. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to worry about this trainer right now anyways. Uh, I'll worry about that, like, off-recording when I need to do, like, any type of off-record battling and stuff. Uh-oh. What's up here? I'm on guard duty. Gee, and I'm thirsty, though. Oh, wait there. Uh, the road's closed. Oh, wait, what? Road is closed. Oh, are you actually serious? Do we actually have to go to the actual Pal Park? Oh, man. Okay. Well, it looks like I think we may probably have to go and actually explore out the Pell Park, then. Alrighty. I guess we're not going to Cantilave right away just yet. Alright, so welcome back to Sandrum Town. I know that it has been quite a while since we've actually been here in this area. Like, I think it was all the way back. I think probably around, like, episode, I want to say, maybe two or so that we haven't really, uh... I did, didn't really do all that too much here in Sandra Town, except for just talking over to uh, Professor Rowan. Well, anyways, guys, I'm going to go and end off this episode here for today. And it seems like uh, for the next one, we are going to be heading on over to the Pell Park. Because there may be something interesting that we have to go and do there first. And then uh, hopefully uh, that cop doesn't really have to go and try to block our way and going into uh, Canale City. Uh, so we'll go and worry about that for next time. So anyways, don't forget to leave a comment, like, or subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. And peace.